I made it to where am I? Augusta, Georgia today from Columbia, South Carolina. It was only like an hour and a half drive. And I stopped at a Walmart and just grabbed a couple of little grocery things. But then I was hungry, so I grabbed a sandwich from over this place. And the sandwich place is right by another Walmart. So I there's like two Walmarts within like a couple minutes of each other, which is awesome. I've just been I'm just rambling. I'm just sitting at this Walmart. But anyways, I just tried to figure out where I'm going to sleep for the night. I called this Walmart to see if they allow overnight hour parking. What's up with Walmart? They don't ever answer their phones ever. No Walmart ever. I always call different Walmarts and they don't answer. And I don't want to walk in there because I just don't feel like going in. And that's just my bad. I know I can. But also... A lot of times when I go to Walmart, I can never find anybody to ask about overnight parking either. So editing Allison here, just to let you know that I do know that I can walk right into Walmart, but sometimes I already have my pajamas on and I don't feel like changing just to go in to ask somebody. And as I just mentioned, sometimes when I go in, I walk around for a long time. Nobody's around to ask. The checkers don't know. The people at customer service don't know. And they always say I need to ask a manager. I can't find a manager. So I just wanted to make sure I say that because I've gotten several comments saying, all you gotta do is just go in and ask permission. Sometimes I do and they just are not available. I'm over it. So I just went on the iOverlander app and I'm going to go to a Cracker Barrel. On the app, it only has one review saying that they do allow it. Uh, it's a nine minute drive. So I'll take you along with me. Let's see, hopefully nothing happens. On the road again. I just can't wait to get on the road again. I mean, I can kind of wait. I'm tired. Also, as a side note, on the iOverlander app, there will show you the list of the places. It'll show you how many miles away it is from you. And then you click into the one you want. And then you scroll down after the reviews. At the very bottom, there's a little link that says Google Maps you can just click into that and it'll take you right over to Google Maps to start directing you over to that place. There's the sandwich shop I went to, Baldino's. I got a tuna sandwich. It was legit. They packed it full of tuna, which I'm looking at you Subway because Subway is usually pretty chintzy when it comes to the tuna. But anyways, it was really good. And instead of it being a six inch, it was a six and a half inch. Suck it Subway. Okay, let me not be too mean on Subway. All right. When I looked up where to go in Augusta in terms of neighborhoods, uh, it said to stay away from the southern part. I feel like there's a lot of cities where the southern part is the like crime part or the negative part. Is it just me or is that kind of a thing? And they were saying also the east part was not a great neighborhood and that crime in Augusta has really come up. I've only been here for the afternoon and so far I really have not felt nervous or felt like this is sketchy in any way. I think I'm more on the northwest side though so I really can't you know, comment on the other parts. One of the little factors, factoids that I found out that this is a heavy gulf uh, area just as Myrtle Beach was a really heavy golf area so if you're into golf apparently they have lots of tournaments here I'm not into golf so I have zero knowledge of any of that but hey if you like golf come to Augusta also like they were saying it's pretty inexpensive to live here uh, I think you could get maybe an apartment for like seven or eight hundred dollars a month which is completely unheard of in the states like california where i was born and raised um but i don't know the condition of a place that would be seven or eight hundred dollars a month so if you're from this area if you're from some of the outer portions of georgia outer, outer portions but like when i think of georgia i think of atlanta because it's a big city so when I say like some of the outer areas, that's kind of what I'm talking about. So if you're from these areas in Georgia, let me know, like, what's the rent like? Is, you know, can you find something under a thousand dollars a month for, you know, something decent? Put it in the comments because I'm looking and I know a 
other people are looking as well. Uh, in these high times of, you know, inflation, it's really gotten out of control. But there's probably still some places out there that aren't too bad for like a one bedroom? Come on now. I mentioned it before, but I don't want to live in a studio apartment or an efficiency because I already live in a one room van. <laughs> So if I'm going to pay for something, I want to have something that has a separate living area from my sleeping area. There's a La Quinta Inn that I could go to if the Cracker Barrel doesn't work out. There's also a Hampton Inn. So hotels are typically my go-to, but I'm trying out different places. And I've parked at a Cracker Barrel, I think, once maybe twice before um, and had good results so and you don't find Cracker Barrels everywhere so it's kind of nice also have you ever had cookout they got the best burgers I don't eat meat but and when I did they had some really great hamburgers they're kind of like that sloppy style hamburger that you would get at someone's backyard barbecue. That's, I believe that's why they call it cookout. But yeah, I liked it. Okay, where is this Cracker Barrel? Cause this is looking kind of a rural. Oh, there it is. Okay, cool. And there's another van already parked there. All right, so nice. This seems good. Um, let me see what this sign says. RV and bus parking. All right. I'm going to park here. I'm definitely going to park here. No. This is tilting to the left, and I need my bed, the head of my bed, to be tilting down. And if I park up here, it angles downwards, so I'd be rolling backwards. So my front of my van is pointing forward. This other van is probably cracking up at me. Plus there's a minivan here too. So that's kind of cool. All right. Okay. Okay. I'll close my curtain. Now, I already got my pajamas on. It's hot here. It was like 80 degrees today. So I'm already ready for bed. It's like 10 o'clock. And I have not been sleeping good at all the past few nights. So I hope tonight's better. What I'll probably do is just lay down, take some nice cleansing breaths, say some prayers, and then I might just turn on, um, ah, Turn on YouTube, like I'll listen to one of those. Um, what am I trying to say here? Uh, I'll put on one of those Abide. It's like a, a website. Get it together. was coming from. Maybe it was the people in the van, I don't know. Anyways. Okay, so the YouTube channel is Abide, and there's an app called Abide, and it's like Christian videos about like falling asleep with God's word, or prayers, or scriptures, or whatever. So what will be helpful is, why can't I talk, bro? What the heck? What's helpful is that my brain sometimes needs to be able to latch onto somebody else's voice so that I can stop thinking about all the things rolling around in my head. And then if it's kind of boring or it's something I don't care about that much, then I'll be like, okay. And then I'll just like fall asleep. There's also a podcast called Let Me Bore You to Sleep. 
sometimes that one is good too because it's just a man he's got a british accent so it's very soothing and he just talks about anything random like super super random things i mean he really does a great job with his podcast let me bore you to sleep i'm hearing a little activity out there so i'll probably stay up for a few minutes just kind of looking out and stop talking so loud and then i'm going to bed all right happy parking okay quick side note let me be quiet for a second because i don't know if you can hear it but there's like a freeway nearby. I actually have up here this thing that I made. Insulation board. And I put the Velcro on. But some of the Velcro's ripped off. When it was hot, it just kind of melted off. So now I have to redo it. But usually it goes up here because I have Velcro right there. So usually I just stick it up here and it stops some of the noise from like freeway. But oh, I never fixed it. So that's why it's going to be like a little tiny extra bit noisy tonight. But it's really not that serious. I can still sleep. Maybe as it gets later, the freeway noise will lessen down a little bit. I got up and got their breakfast. I got the hash brown casserole, which is delicious. Fried apples and a biscuit with butter and jelly. They gave me two biscuits, which I thought was very nice. And their biscuits are not hard and crunchy. They're actually pretty soft and, you know, spongy and delicious. Thank you, Cracker Barrel.